Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This lecture about patient assessment, examination, diagnosis, and treatment planning. For success, the operative treatment, the dentist should be have a good background in oral medicine and an understanding of how to perform complete extraoral and intraoral hard and soft tissue examination. For uh, success diagnosis, the dentist should have a good knowledge about normal texture and pathological change in the oral cavity and extraoral facially and should be used the sign and symptom of the patient problems to perform a success diagnosis for success treatment. We have a general consideration for diagnosis. The first, infection control measures. This uh, measures to protect the dentist from the contamination from the patient and oral cavity of the patient by using a mask, protective eyewear, gloves, and gowns. Second consideration, the medical and dental health survey question should be good cover from the dentist and the dentist should be have a good overview questions about the medical history and dental history because the dental history is very important for a new treatment and the medical history is very important to good uh, manipulation of the patient to prevent any defect. The third consideration is examination. The examination is hand-on, hands-on process of observing patient's extraoral and intraoral structure and detecting of the symptom and sign of abnormal condition or disease. The examination as we say, hands-on by the mirror and we can observe the patients, extraoral and intraoral. And uh, we can record any sign and symptom of the abnormal patient suffering. The fourth consideration combined patient assessment and examination information is then used to form and formulate the diagnosis after complete good assessment and complete good complete examination information we can good formulate the diagnosis Patient assessment, first, medical history. Infection, infectious disease that requires special precaution, procedure, or transfer. It's very important to diagnose the infectious disease to prevent contamination of the dentist from the infectious disease such as a viral disease hepatitis viral maybe uh, AIDS maybe and uh, we know the COVID-19 second allergies or medication which may be contraindicated the use of the certain drug. We should know about the patient allergies and what the patient use a medication 
to to treat it without defect to the patient from the allergy or medication. Medical history th three systemic disease and cardiac abnormalities, joint replacement, all these disease should be required a prophylactic antibiotic coverage or other treatment medication. All these uh, uh, systemic disease such as a cardiac abnormalities or cardiac valve should we have a uh, antibiotic cover before the dental treatment and if we need to consult to the medicine medic medicine to have a uh, good information about the systemic disease fourth prophylactic change associated with the age which may be alter the clinical presentation and influence the treatment as you know the old age have a different treatment plan from the young age such as the the reduction of the pulp in the old age and the old age maybe have low immunity the old age may not resist the more duration of the treatment times maybe the, the old age need short time and the, the all the oral tissue differ from the young such as the heart enamel and dentine uh, gingivitis low periodontitis uh, health all these should be uh, alter the clinical presentation of the treatment dental history information about past dental problems previous dental treatment and patient response to treatment the past dental problem is very important record to use it to good diagnosis because the past dental problem is very important to confirm or formulate the a new treatment plan it may be have a defect in the past dental problem and what's the response of the patient to the to the past dental problems that's lead to identify of the spe specific problems the areas of food impaction this is very big problems in the patient inability to floss area of pain areas of pain broken restoration or tooth diagnostic quality of the available radiograph should be recorded all these problems such as food impaction food impaction due to lose of the contact between the teeth inability of flossing may be due to incorrect restoration or uh, areas of pain is very important to detect the area of the problems and the broken restoration or tooth this is very defect and the patient may be suffering from the sensitivity all these problems should be take a diagnostic x-ray to have a good diagnosis chief concern or chief complaint this is the first question should be taking from the patient because the patient come to the clinic due to the chief complaint what's the chief complaint chief complaint before initiating any treatment the patient chief 
problem, chief complaint, initiated the patient's visit and should be identified and clearly understood. Dental record and discuss all the aspect symptom of the current problem. The dentist should be have a complete record and uh, good discuss about the chief complaint and all the aspect and symptom and sign of this chief complaint. Chief complaint included the onset, onset of the chief complaint, duration of the chief complaint, and related factor they are experiencing, and select appropriate treatment options for the concern, and uh, building a sound relationship with the patient. So, the dentist diagnosis and the treatment planning should be, should be related directly with the chief complaint of the patient. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This is the second part of uh, assessment, diagnosis and uh, treatment planning of patient. The clinical examination, initially conservation with the patient, carefully observation of extraoral symmetry of the patient's physical appearance of the head and neck. Symmetry means that uh, the left half of the face should be mirror to the right half of the face and uh, should be good diagnosis of the mandibular movement during the speech without difficulties in the speech should be and the ability of articulator sounds and tendency to smile provides vital informa information relative to overall personal of absent or of abnormalities or disease all these should be observed when the patient uh, speech and smile and uh, symmetry of the patient any defect or in these should be diagnosed and record Observation occur while reviewing information reported in the medical and dental history and while listening to the patient chief complaint. Medical history and dental history is very important, should be good details and uh, listen to the patient about the chief complaint, chief concern. It's very important. Followed by the intraoral examination involve periodontium, dentition, and occlusion with the proper instrument, including mirror, explorer, and periodontal probe. Periodontal probe is very important used in the diagnosis to discover the periodontitis, uh, sulcus, periodontal uh, gingival sulcus, and to the, diagnose the pocket. It's very important. Tooth color evaluation becomes a factor if teeth are more visible when the smile or at the resting position of lip this uh, when the patient at in the rest position the centrals maybe appear two millimeters or 
two to four millimes during the resting of the lips and during the smile of the patient the whole upper teeth anterior should be visible darker color teeth teeth with the enamel intrinsic staining and conditions such as tetracycline staining all increase the risk for not satisfying the aesthetic expectation of the patient during the aesthetic all these diagnose of the aesthetic and the discuss about the causes of the staining and we put the treatment plan for treatment of this aesthetic problems examination of the aesthetic appearance may be described as the evaluation of number one a tooth color color of the tooth form of the tooth display of the anterior teeth and position in relation to the face may be complicated by the maximum tooth display for aesthetic the color of the tooth is very defect in the aesthetic and the form of the teeth maybe the lateral have a cone shape it's very defect in the aesthetic and display of the anterior teeth the teeth may be not display or the teeth may be completely display and the gum may be display this defect in the aesthetic and uh, the complicated with the maximum tooth display b symmetry of the gingival margin become very important in a patient who display a large amount of gingival tissue excessive or uneven gingival display when smile during the smile the gingiva should be have a same level in the right position and left position and the even even level but in asymmetry maybe the gingiva in two teeth may be uh, more uh, proliferation and cover more the tooth all these will lead to asymmetry in the gingiva in this case the patient suffer from the rectangular anterior teeth and have a gum smile where during the smile the gum appear all these because have a false pocket in the gingiva and this need, patient need to uh, teeth le uh, lengthening to return of the to return to the normal size of the teeth in this case this is the same patient after teeth lengthening will appear nice smile with the normal size of the teeth and uh, disappear of the gum smile examination of the occlusion the occlusion is a potential impact on the muscle of the mastication and tm joint this examination include signs of the occlusion trauma such as heavy wear face enamel crack tooth mobility and uh, notation of occlusal abnormalities all these signs lead to have a problem in the occlusion such as trauma in the occlusion this due to defect in the occlusion and enamel crack tooth mobility tooth mobility due to, to the periodontitis and uh, heavy uh, biting b anatomical occlusion is a mag maximum intercuspation anatomical occlusion this is due to heavy occlusion lead to 
maximum intercuspation between the upper and lower posterior teeth. C. Relationship between the molar and canine classification, angle classification, such as class 1, 2, 3, and the amount of the vertical overlap and overbite between the anterior teeth. As we know, the overbite and overjet is very important to diagnose the patient in which classification. B. D. The dynamic functional occlusion in all movement of the mandible. Functional occlusion should be easy to move uh, the mandible right, left, forward, and all exclusive in, the, in between. And the relationship of the tooth in uh, centric relation. Centric relation called a uh, statistic Static static occlusion. We have two occlusion. Static occlusion mean that the centric occlusion and dynamic occlusion in the movement of the mandible, which is the orthopedic position of the joint, where the condylar head and it and its most anterior and superior position during the centric relation the condylar head should be positioned in the anterior and superior position of the glenoid fossa on the eminent of the glenoid fossa the dynamic occlusion in all movement of the mandible, left, right, forward, and relation of the tooth and centric relation, which is the orthopedic position of the joint where the condylar head and its movement. As we say, the condylar head position its most anterior and superior position on the articulating eminence within the glenoid fossa. This is the position of the condylar head in the centric relationship. Examination of uh, teeth and uh, restoration. The clinical examination is achieved in a clean, dry, well illuminated mouth. When we diagnose the problem in the teeth should be dry and clean and well illuminated in the mouth to have a good uh, diagnosis. Proper instruments include mirror, explorer, <coughs> periodontal probe, and the ability to air dry. The surface of the tooth are required. Every accessible surface of uh, each uh, tooth must be. During the dryness and the cleaning of the tooth, we can see the hidden caries or hidden defect in the tooth. Inspected for localized change in color, texture, and the translucency, starting in the upper right quadrant with the most posterior teeth and progressing around the maxillary and mandibular articulator. Dental uh, arch. Dental uh, loose and uh, useful in identifying overhanging restoration, improper proximal contour, and uh, open contact. All these defects should be good inspected. Overhang, it's very, very, very dangerous defect, improper proximal contact, and open contact. Improper proximal contour, all these will lead to secondary caries and uh, more gingivitis and periodontitis and lead to formation of the pocket. Clinical examination for caries. 
the International Carries Detection and Assessment System was developed to serve as a guide for the standardization visible carries assessment that could be used for clinical practice has been further condensed by the American Dental Association into the carries classification system American Dental Association American Dental Association carries classification system see in this table by this uh, by this uh, protocol we can use it used to diagnose and uh, treatment plan for the caries the treatment of initial caries by sealant optional the moderate caries treatment with the sealant or minimally intensive restoration and the extensive caries treated with the needed of minimally invasive restoration these three three type of the caries initial caries moderate caries and uh, extensive caries the initial caries treated with a sealant maybe without cavity preparation sealant just sealant and the uh, moderate caries treated with the sealant or minimally intensive yeah, shadow cavity shallow cavity and extensive caries should be treated with the need to minimally or intensive restoration assalamu alaikum this is the third part of the lecture of assessment diagnosis and uh, treatment planning in clinical study I have shown the explorer unreliable because the uses of the probe or the explorer it's unreliable because during the use of the probe may be lead to cavitation in the teeth in the demineralized Bit and fissure and uh, preventing the possibility of the remineralization and uh, contamination of the other tooth with the bacteria of the caries the use of the probe in the probing of the initial caries lead to cavitation and this cavitation can't be remineralized and arrested this defect lead to cavitation second the probe may be contaminate and transfer the caries bacteria from the tooth to another tooth the proximal caries detected by the radiograph in the posterior teeth and an anterior teeth use a radiograph and trans illumination carefully probing it's very important to use the probe carefully without pressure with an explorer on the proximal surface may be detected uh, cavitation proximally in posterity you can detect the cavitation by the probe but carefully which is defined as a break in the surface contour of the enamel any tooth that has extensive caries should be pulp test the posterior teeth detected the posterior caries by the uh, carefully probing by the explorer the second diagnosis of the caries in posterior teeth by the radiograph to, to detect the proximal caries in anterior teeth we can be detect the caries by the 
radiograph and the trans illumination use the light in the palatal surface and see the illumination to detect the caries point. In, in any teeth, when we see the extensive caries, this tooth with the extensive caries should be undergo to pulp testing, maybe have a pulpitis. Examination of the amalgam restoration, amalgam restoration evaluated. Number one, amalgam blows. As we see in this picture, the discoloration of the tooth beside the amalgam called it amalgam blows due to uh, due to the corrosion of the amalgam in the tooth tissue. This uh, proximal overhang in the X-ray can see the overhang of the amalgam restoration and this overhang lead to gingivitis, periodontitis, bone resorption of the septal bone between the two posterior teeth. The three, marginal detection. Any amalgam restoration or any restoration should be detect the peripheries of the restoration to detect the leakage. Or this leakage in the restoration is very important and have a defect maybe lead to secondary caries. Voids. The voids is very important because uh, lead to food stagnation and lead to caries, diagnose, uh, secondary caries. Fracture line lines. The fracture may be occur in the restoration mostly in the office, in the join between the class 2 and the class 1 isthmus area this isthmus area commonly have a crack fracture due to an not sufficient length of this area lead to fracture 6 line identity it then indicated uh, the interface between the apotid amalgam restorations placed at the separated time. This amalgam have a, a line between the restoration and tooth and this line may be large and have a Caries. So this line will be enlarged with the time. Improper anatomy, anatomical contour. When the restoration have a flat without carving, it's very defect restoration. The restoration with the anatomical carving, it's very scientific. This is uh, to prevent the lateral force or lateral drift of the tooth. Tooth with the flat amalgam, it's uh, not good for uh, periodon periodontium because the force of the mastication may be lead to laterally to the tooth. And the Anatomical carving of the restoration lead to efficient uh, mastication. Marginal ridge incompatibility. Marginal ridge of the restoration should be compatible with the gum and uh, should be compatible with the surrounding tissue to prevent rotation and uh, maybe have a periodontitis. Improper proximal contacts. Any proximal restoration 
when don't have any contact it's failure should be repeated so the important point in the proximal restoration should be have a proximal contact improper occlusion occlusal contacts the restoration should be restore the tooth in a normal anatomy without under occlusion under occlusion of the restoration lead to improper mastication recurrent caries lesion the recurrent caries lesion is very important because the defect during the restoration may be lead to gap or uh, leakage of the food accumulation and fluid in the mouth and lead to caries lesion sound tooth when diagnosis and treatment planning of the teeth sound tooth surface in this picture we see a sound tooth surface clean sound clean tooth no caries change after air dry five second dryness of the tooth five second or hypoplasia wear erosion and other non caries phenomena it's very clean tooth without any defect these tooth maybe need if we have a deep pits and deep fissure maybe need to sealant this is optional not important but optional for future prevention initial caries in this picture first visual change in the enamel seen only after air drying or colored we see a change a thin limited to the confines of the pit and fissure area this is an initial caries we see discoloration in the pit and fissure area in this case should be or optional use a sealant if we don't do a sealant shouldn't be improve the oral hygiene and regular brushing over the tooth to prevent uh, enlargement of the initial caries distinct visual change if we have a visual change in the enamel see when weight during the weight when see a white or colored wider than the fissure fossa in this case we see a, a colored of the tooth maybe white or colored yellow to brown color or white in white caries this tooth have a chalky appearance due to caries and if we have a brown occlusally maybe have a food accumulation and initial caries this uh, case optionally treated by the sealant optionally and if we don't do a sealant should be improve the oral hygiene and uh, tell the patient to good cleaning of the teeth to prevent enlargement of the bismillah rahman rahim this uh, fourth uh, parts of uh, diagnosis assessment and treatment planning lectures we complete the diagnosis of the caries in this picture the caries have a moderate level localized enamel breakdown with the no visible dentin caries within the enamel underlying shadow 
discontinuity of surface enamel the surface of the enamel cut and have a cavity widening of fissuring this is the moderate caries this caries treated with the sealant or minimally invasive restoration needed okay we have two type of the treatment of this moderate caries sealant fill of this fissure by the sealant materials or minimally invasive restoration the moderate maybe have a treated just by the minimally invasive restoration this underlying dark shadow when we have a dark shadow this means that the shadow have a caries underlining shadow from the dentine with or without localized enamel breakdown maybe the caries entering to the dentine without a breakdown of the enamel because the enamel is very hard so the caries will transverse to the dentine with the small leakage this caries treated just by the minimally invasive restoration in extensive caries in this picture the distinct cavity with the visible dentine we can see the cavity in the dentine frank cavity cavitation involves less than half of the tooth surface this is the deep cavity this treated by the minimally invasive restoration extensive distinct cavity with a dentine cavity is deep and wide involving more than half of the tooth this treated by the minimally invasive restorations clinical examination of tooth colored restoration how can to examine of tooth color restoration the presence of the improper contour or inadequate proximal contact overhang margin recurrent caries or occlusal interference should be noted and considered for the correction the composite restoration it can be corrected corrected the defect that occur in the restoration may be improper contour improper contour buccally lingually proximally over contour lead gingivitis and uh, less can contour may be lead to trauma to the gum and inadequate proximal contact is very important as we see previously need to correct the restoration by the uh, refilling to have a good contact area and overhang may be lead to gingivitis periodontitis and uh, may be lead to more periodontitis reach to the apical area recurrent caries in composite is very common that occur because the inadequate finishing and polishing of the composite may be lead to food accumulation around the composite and lead to recurrent caries occlusal interference should be noted over uh, high spot or over anatomy of the restoration corrective procedure include recontour polishing repairing or replacement of the restoration if a tooth color restoration has a dark margin stain or is discolored to the extent that it is aesthetically aesthetically and appealing to the patient so this uh, defect 
of discoloration of the margin, marginal staining. This can be corrected with the repairing of this uh, of the lines because the lines lead to aesthetically is aesthetically is incorrect. Assessment of the pulp tooth with the extensive restoration or with the pulp of questionable vitality should be tested. If we see any restoration and the tooth have a more large size, this tooth should be have a pulp test due to may be affected by the large restoration. Hot and cold application. This is the type of the testing of the pulp. Oh, number one, by the hot and cold application. Vitality test, a cotton roll saturated with the an aerosol refrigeration spray is placed on the tooth to determine the vitality of the tooth or can use a pencil of ice it's uh, applied on the tooth to have a vitality of the tooth made by the freezing water inside the uh, anesthetic cartilage the heat application by the heated a piece of the gutta on the tooth Second test of the pulp, it's a electric pulp tester. It is limited because can't be used in weight field and in metallic restoration. Also does not reflect the health of the pulp because the electric may be not reflect the health of the pulp because the affected by the restoration and may be affected by the periodontium. Third test of the pulp, a test activity used when electric and thermal test failed. So the preparation initiated without using anesthesia if pain or sensitive is uh, elasted with the bare pulp vitality is confirmed. The third tester, we can do a preparation without anesthesia to can detect the tooth if vital or not. Other tests should be done during the examination are percussion test by gently tapping the occlusal or incisal surface of the suspected and adjacent tooth with the with the end of the mirror and uh, determine the tenderness the pain suggested possible injury to the periodontal membrane from the pulp or periodontal inflammation care the posterior maxillary teeth give a positive response in maxillary sinus. Percussion by tapping of the tooth by the uh, handle of the end of the mirror to, to differentiate between the painful tooth and the non-painful tooth. Two, palpation done by the roping the index finger along the facial and lingual mucosa overlying the apical region of the tooth and periapical pathogenesis may be caused tenderness to the palpation by the finger index we can move on the apical area and if we have a lesion 
maybe have a tenderness to pain in the patient. Radiographic examination of the tooth and restoration. Patients at higher risk of caries or periodontal disease should receive more extensive radiographic survey. A systemic review of method of diagnosis. Number one, moderate to deep occlusal caries lesion may be seen as a radiolucency extending into the dentine. The depth of the caries can be seen in a radiolucence area extend to the, in the dentine. As we see in this picture, any radiolucency under the restoration will lead to will uh, result of the caries. Two, diagnosis of the proximal surface caries appear as a dark area, restoration. Overhang appear as a white area, radio, radiographically or poorly contour uh, restoration, posterior biting and anterior periapical radiolysis. In radiograph, we can see clearly the, the overhang as a radio opacity, white color. And we can see the caries as a radiolucency, as a black color. Three, radiolucency is appear beneath the occlusion enamel, occlusal enamel surface emanating from the dentino enamel junction. The radiolucency means that have a caries. Four, defective aspect of restoration, including the improper contour overhang. All these in defect and restoration uh, appear as a radioopic in x-ray. Five, recurrent caries lesion gingival to restoration. Recurrent caries that occur after the restoration may be due to stagnation of fluid lead to, of, uh, lead to formation of the recurrent caries. Six, the height and uh, integrity of the marginal periodontium may be evaluated using the bite wing. In the bite wing, we can see the margin of the periodontium and to see if it's normal or uh, pathogenic effect. Seven. Pulpal abnormalities such as the pulpal pulp stone and uh, internal uh, resumption, resumption, all these uh, can see clearly in the X-ray. Eight, periapical radiograph are uh, helpful in uh, identify change in the periapical periodontium that are consistent with the periapical abscess, dental granuloma, or cyst. All these can be seen in the periapical radiograph as a widening in the periodontium and may be seen as a radiolucence ball in the apical area in the granuloma and cyst. Ten. Aid in a determ determining the relationship between the margin of existing or uh, proposed restoration and bone. In, uh, in the X-ray, we can detect the relationship between the bone restoration and uh, tooth tissue. A biologic width of the of at least two millim is required for the 
junctional epithelium and the connective tissue attachment located between the base of the sulcus and the alveolar bone crest. This is uh, normal. We can see the attached epithelium and connective tissue and crest of the bone in the periodontium. Adjunctive eye to examining teeth, number one. Magnification in operative dentistry. The viewing in this picture, evaluation of small details in the teeth. Intraoral tissue restoration and study cast. All these can use adjunctive for using uh, in examining of the teeth. Normal vision is often inadequate to view the TL needed to make treatment decision and should be used uh, magnifications such as loops provide a large image to the maintaining with the less eye fatigue. Most dentists use magnification of 2x to 4x with a small light weight, light emitting diode. In a good diagnosis, should be used a loop for good magnification because the eye without loops maybe have a fatigue and can't diagnose a small defect. To photograph in operative dentistry, photograph is an excellent tool for documentation and uh, evaluation, intraoral camera and single lens relax, single lens relax. This uh, intraoral camera, digital camera, provide a document existing aesthetic condition such as color, shape, and position of teeth. Close up image of existing bits and fissure provide the opportunity to image current condition for the pro purpose of future re-evaluation and detection of change that may be developing. Intraoral camera is very important to diagnose the hidden area and a clear picture to detect the defect. Three, diagnostic study model, helpful in the evaluation of the patients. Number one, to evaluation uh, clinical status in many situations and understanding of occlusal relationship, the function occlusion and any occlusal abnormalities. All these can be seen clearly in the study model. Two, help in developing the treatment plan and uh, serve as a tool for educating the patient. In the study model, we can see the defect and we can educate the patient to know the diagnostic and the treatment plan. Three, defective restoration can be seen in the study model, coronal contours, proximal contact, and embrasure space between the teeth, thus saving a valuable chair time. Number four, caries detection technology. We have a new update device for caries detection. These devices maybe have a potential to replace the tactile portion of caries detection. Number one, Diagno dent device, as we see in this picture, diagno dent device used laser fluorescence technology with the intensive intention of 
detection and measuring bacterial production. This device act by the laser fluorescence to detect the bacterial production and change in tooth structure in the caries lesion. Yield numerical score for 0 to 99. This score uh, will uh, act as a level of the caries. When the score will elevate it, that means that the caries will be large. The manufacturer has uh, recommended threshold score that uh, represent the present and uh, extent of a lesion. Two, second device for caries detection is a COMX spectra. COMX spectra. I to detect the caries lesion by the measuring the increased light induced fluorescence especially LEDs project high uh, project high energy violet or blue light into the tooth surface light of this wavelength supposedly simulated profi lines meta polites unique to cariogenic bacteria to appear distinctly red so the red light will distinct uh, uh, caries and bacteria while healthy enamel fluorescence to appear a green so the red appearance means that a uh, cariogenic bacteria and uh, green appear will lead to a uh, tooth healthy third device for detection of the caries the carry scan bro is a device for the detection and uh, monitoring of caries by the application and analysis of the assist enable clin clinician to evaluate demineralized teeth structure using assist by providing information about tissue being healthy this device will uh, identify the demineralized tooth structure demineralized tooth structure means that the uh, present of the caries bismillah rahman rahim this is the fifth part of uh, assessment diagnosis treatment planning of lectures we are reached to the treatment planning after assessment and examination and diagnosis we do a treatment planning treatment plans are include patient preference patient motivation systemic health emotional state and financial resources the treatment plan is also influenced by the dentist's knowledge experience and training laboratory support dentist patient compatibility all these notes it's very effect in the treatment planning any patient with the, any problem maybe have a more than one treatment plan multiple treatment plan so the treatment plan depend on this information also and include strategies designed to reduce the patient's risk for the future caries or other oral disease. A treatment plan is not a static list or services. Success of the treatment plan is determined by its ability to meet the patient's initial and long-term need. 
So the treatment plan effect by the patient and dentist and the problems and risk. When the restoration is subsequently replaced, additional tooth structure is removed. Result in what has been termed the cycle of uh, re-restoration, which leads to larger and more invasive restoration over the course of a patient's life. So, any replacement of the restoration lead to larger of the restoration. The sealant in the case of Pitt and Fisher are the preferable and preferred method of the managing control lesion that are neither cavitation nor involve dentine. Sealant is scientific and typical treatment for initial caries, neither than cavitation. The managing of non-cavitation and non-cavitated enamel lesion with the remineralization. Remineralization requires a shift in the delicated de de delicated balance of the oral biofilm and uh, therefore depend heavily on change in the patient behavior. Improved the home care diet and the timely applicated of anatomical antimicrobial agent, fluoride and other remineralizing agent. All these uh, will lead to remineralization of the caries. Remineralization of the caries is very um, good for treatment of the initial caries because the caries will stop it and uh, remineralized by, by fluoride and uh, good cleaning of the patient. If confirmed a cavitation of the enamel or demineralization penetration into the dentine on coronal surface is present or a break exists in the contour of the exposed root and softening of the surface, then operative treatment is usually recommended. In the caries will reach to cavitation, the treatment is usually recommended by the operative treatment by cavitation and restoration. Inter, uh, interdisciplinary interdisciplinary consideration and operative treatment. Following is a discussion on the sequencing operative care with the endodontic, periodontal, orthodontic, surgery, and uh, prostodontic treatment. The relation of the endo of the operative with the all these department. In the odontic, all teeth to be restored with the large restoration should have a palpal and periapical peri evaluation. As we see previously, teeth with the large restoration should be have a palpal or periapical evaluation. If indicated teeth should have endodontic treatment before restoration is completed. Also, a tooth previously endodontically 
treated should be evaluated by the retro retreatment before restorative therapy is initiated. Tooth with the previous endodontic should be evaluated by the radiograph to exact scientific treatment without any defect. Periodontitis. Periodontis, periodontal treatment should precede operative care, especially when improve oral hygiene and initial scaling root planing. Procedures create through the redu reduction of the gingival inflammation. A tooth with the questionable periodontal prognosis should not receive any extensive restoration until periodontal treatment provides a more favorable prognosis. Caries control may be utilized temporization, temporalization, uh, creation of a foundation of root canal treatment before periodontal therapy. This, uh, in the case of uh, periodontal treatment, should be started with the endo, endo treatment because the tooth have two, two problems periodontitis and uh, pulpitis. So we started with the, with the endodontic treatment before periodontal therapy. And other cases, the periodontal treatment should be proceed the operative treatment. The correction of the gross restoration defect and restoration contours such as open contact result from the restoration under contour, gingival overhang, poor embrasure form, occlusal interference restoration and increased mobility and consider a part of initial periodontal therapy and such correction enable a more favorable tissue response. This correction on the gross restoration defect, such these uh, defects, contact and embrasure and uh, overhang for occlusal interference and increase, it's considered a part of initial periodontal therapy and then uh, corrected enable easily in the operative. Patient with the gingivitis and early periodontitis generally respond favorably to improve the oral hygiene and scaling root planning procedure. Patient with the more advanced periodontitis might require removal of the associated risk factor through the surgical step that eliminate and reduce the various regenerative procedure to resolve their periodontal tissue. And then we do the operative and or aesthetic procedures. In addition, any teeth required restoration that may be encroach on the biological width of the periodontium should have a appropriate crown lengthening surgery procedure prefer 
referred before the final restoration is placed. Usually, a minimum of six weeks is required after the surgery before final restoration procedures are undertaking. If we need to restore or make a filling for tooth gingivally or we can need to lengthening of the crown this will uh, should be do a crown lengthening surgery crown lengthening surgery and we do when we do a crown lengthening surgery should be wait six weeks to have a to good uh, heal healthy of the gum yeah, the healthy of the gum need six weeks after the surgery and then do the restoration procedures or crowns orthodontics orthodontics therapy such as the relining realignment or extrusion may be required to provide improve the interdental space stress distribution function and aesthetic all caries lesion should be corrected with the amalgam or composite restoration before orthodontic treatment being in addition patient under going orthodontic treatment should be receive a more intensive elimination of risk factor for caries and gingivally periodontal disease any patient that treated orthodontically should be completely uh, remove any caries by the restoration to have a good teeth for orthodontic treatment and then maybe need after the orthodontic treatment need a composite aesthetic restoration oral surgery in most instant impacted and erupted and or hopelessly diseased teeth should be removed before operative treatment oral surgery procedure Steps required for third molar removal may be tubar dies, a new restoration placed on the second molar. Five, fix removable and implant prostodontics. Direct restoration should be completed if possible before placing indirect restoration large amalgam or composite foundation restoration must have secondary retention future grooves slot pins so this uh, restoration should be have a secondary retention future to have a good retention placed further from the external surface of the tooth so the retention of the foundation materials is not compromised during the preparation for the indirect restoration so the indirect the direct restoration is proceed any work and then the Big restoration should we have uh, additional retention. In removable prosthesis, tooth preparation and restoration should allow us for rest, guide, plan, and clasps. The design of the direct restoration and the selection of the appropriate restoration materials must be compatible with the design of the design of the com contemplated 
removable prosthesis. In patients with a removable prosthesis, the dentist should be do a rest for removable prosthesis and to correct the guide plan and uh, prepare the position of the clasp to the removable prosthesis.